Hello YouTube, Fuzz here and welcome back to Final Fantasy XII and today we're going to be undertaking an interesting side quest known as the Great Cockatrice Escape. So come and join me and if you enjoy watching please let us know in the comment section and hit the like button and more importantly stay tuned. Right so there's a couple of prerequisites before you can do this side quest. The first, quite simply, is that you have to have completed the story up until the point where you finish the Dracula Laboratory. So, quite a ways into the game, uh, but you do need to do that or you won't be able to finish this quest line. And second of all, you're going to need the Feather of the Flock item. It's a key item. I'll just show it you here. There it is, the Feather of the Flock. And you basically loot that during the rainy season from the Giza Plains, and it's from the area next to the save point on the right here. See the blue save point at the bottom? It's in the very next area with that objective marker that's flashing in it. You can uh, loot an urn in there that contains the feather of the flock, but only in the rainy season. It's the same area where Gil Snapper spawns and you need to have done the With the Trees side quest in order to access that. All that's available in this playlist, so go ahead and check that out if you need to do those prerequisites. But I'm assuming that you've done all that and that you want to stick solely to the particular side quest we're working on today. So to do this, you're going to have to come here to the Nomad Village in the dry season. So once again, the quickest way to Giza Plains Nomad Village is to teleport to Rabanasta, then just head out the south gate and run through the first area and you'll reach it. And then what you want to do is go into the pen here and speak to this boy that's simply titled Nomad Youth. And then we very quickly find out his name is Terra. And he tells us it was his responsibility to tend the cockatrices. But then, for apparently no reason whatsoever, they all escaped from the pen, ran off, and now we don't know where they are. If only he had one of those magic feathers that Daniel used to talk to him, this wouldn't have happened. Well, fair enough. So once we've done that, once we spoke to him, we've actually accepted the quest. And so now we're going to go ahead and return to Rabanasta for the sole reason that we're going to be teleporting. There's a lot of travelling to do in this uh, side quest. So hopefully you've unlocked a lot of the locations with the orange crystals now. I'm sure you would have by this point. Since this isn't available anyway until, you know, as we've said, we've done uh, the, labor uh, the laboratory area. So the first area we're going to port to is Eriit Village. And we're going to have another kind of mini quest to do here as part of this side quest. So we need to run to the next area here and all the way to the end. Oh, thank you, Jamie Little Hales, for your subscription. That's wonderful. I appreciate it. It's good to have you on board. So we're just going to run all the way to the end. And I do like to use the high speed mode, although it can be a little bit tricky. Let's just slow it down a little. If you want to know how to change the high speed mode, watch my high speed counter. I have explained it without having to go into the menu. Then when you hold the out, normally you press the L1 button and that would, uh, you know, change you from normal speed to whatever high speed you've got set. Instead, you want to hold that down and then use the directional keys left and right to actually adjust what, to whatever speed you want to use. So a nice little tip for you. I did make a video on that actually and a lot of people watched it, so... Um, it's, you know, important, I should imagine, to, to know that since you're changing speed so frequently in this game. So here we have a cockatrice. We're going to speak to them. We learn that their name is Chit. Who tells us that that Vera bird won't stop staring. She don't look very happy to me. Wonder what's up with her. Nothing serious, I hope. So how strange we can talk to Chit. Well, that's because we have a feather. Myrne, pretty name. Hmm, I ain't seen a fella bird so miserable. Maybe I can do something to cheer her up a bit. So we're going to speak to, I'm guessing it's Drin or Madrin or some strange name that I'm just not going to have any chance of pronouncing, unfortunately. Whence has this cockatrice come? These beasts, too, no loneliness. Okay, and once we spoke to both of those, we can see there's a sparkly light on the floor, so we're going to go ahead and collect that. It's a dew drop pebble, and we're going to speak to name I can't pronounce once more and this time she says ah is that a dew drop of pebble you have that uh, you have there they are said to bring fortune to you on the day you find them I remember gathering pebbles with my sister so okay we'll give her this one 
Dewdrop pebbles are no common stones. They sometimes rain down with the afternoon, showers or during thick morning fogs. They cannot be carried beyond the village for they vanish. The pebbles can exist only here, not unlike the Viera. Interesting. It seems to show interest. Seems, seems to show interest in Dewdrop pebbles. Should you find some, will you bring them here? Okay, so basically she wants us to find some more of these pebbles. So I should think we can do that. It's not too much out of our way since they're all located in this particular area. And there's actually one around here somewhere as well, I believe. So you have to look for the sparklies on the ground, obviously. That's the way you do this. And I believe there's one around here. Nope, I think the map I was looking at had just duplicated the uh, one we've just looted. So we're going to move over into the next area here. And starting from the top, we're just going to make our way around. Looking for the sparklies, there's one. Okay, and now that's all we have to do. So this time we'll head around to the south. And we can see there's one in somebody's bowl there. Well, it looked like it was. Having it for breakfast or something, maybe. Who knows? Uh, right then. So now we head down to the next area. And here, um, there might be one around on these steps. It's possible I'm misreading that. Am I seeing a sparklies? I'm not at the moment. Ooh, what was that? Was that just speak? Oh, yeah. Just dialogue. Okay, let's head up here. There's one around. There we go. Look. They are hard to miss. If you know where they are, you're not really going to miss them, I should say. Well, that's a bit of a truism in itself. Okay. Then there's either two or three more around here. So if we just look around this kind of side. See where Mr. Sparkly is hiding out this time. Maybe in this section. There it is. Ah, oh, that one's out of reach. That sucks. Maybe we can speak to Wood Dweller. There we go. That's how you do that one. And if we just head down here, there's another one just on the corner, or on the edge. And then down into this section, and right down south, there's one just chilling on the floor. And how many have we got now? We need eight in total. Uh, oh, wrong thing. I think it's loot we want. We've got seven. So there's just one more that we're missing. And it's possible it's down here, but I don't think it is. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Okay, so I did actually run past one earlier. If we head up these stairs, if we're going to get into the next area, then it's just on this branch here. The sparkling light and that's the final dew drop pedal so we've got eight in total and with that we can basically head back to Mergin or whatever that person's name is that I can't pronounce and say look what we found okay so that wasn't the most exciting conversation, uh, but uh, let's speak to Chit. Sparkle, sparkle, I'm blooming sure I'm forgetting something. Now what the heck was it? Oh, I forgot me bleeding beak if it weren't screwed on. I'm going to go crackers trying to remember. And a glowing object now falls from Chit, so we're going to go ahead and loot that. 
and we find a milk white pebble this time which would also apparently make a fine gift so we're going to present that one to this person whose name I can't pronounce I believe its memory is lost looking on the pebble seems to be of some help though it is close now to memory and I can feel it and you have found more of the pebbles offer her this one thank you I think this should be enough to help our visitor and we actually get a reward for doing this you've gathered many dewdrop pebbles enough even to make a pendant I would think a sparkly pendant now where have I heard that before Ah, I can't sod him well remember love them sparkly pebbles have you remembered as a matter of fact I have everything from start to finish I was gathering them sparky pebbles because I thought as they'd make a nice pendant, see? Only trouble was they'd vanish every time I tried to take them out of the village. So I had a bit of a think and I thought, what if I got them out so fast they wouldn't know they'd gone? And that's when I made a break for it. The rest is memorable. You are lucky to have been caught on the tree. Lucky too that its limbs held fast. A fall from this height would have been fatal. When the wood warders reached you, you were quite unconscious. And now, I'd better be on my way. They'd be wondering where I got to. Oh, and that teller girl's such a little darling. Wondering, wouldn't want to worry her any more than I have already. She can be a bit sensitive, see? A kindred spirit. Now, don't go talking like that, girl. Wow, a lot of dialogue here. Yeah, grown woman. you got to keep your head out eye. As about I give you all them sparkly pebbles I found, eh? How'd you like that? Now then, I really should get going. It's back to good old geezer for this bird. Taffer or your help with them pebbles, darling? Taffer? I don't quite get that slang. I'd have never remembered terror without them. Cheerio. And we get a Yoichi. A Yoichi bow for our first reward. And the first cockatrice is back to the geezer planes. Very good. So now we can move on to the next. And what we're going to want to do is teleport back to Rabanasta. See you there. So you want to head to the north end of Rabanasta and be prepared for one of the most frustrating parts of Final Fantasy XII. Forget all the hardest, toughest bosses that you haven't yet fought. Forget all the times where you have to do... Uh, you know, large laps around areas to grind for specific items or open treasure chests. Nothing really compares to trying to complete this part of the cockatrice side quest. Just wait and see. So here's the cockatrice, the missing cockatrice. So we speak to him. And he doesn't have much to say for himself, he just runs off. And here's the thing. We now have to catch the little bugger. And he really is a bugger. Because he will not allow you to go anywhere near him without running away. And the only way to speak to him is to catch him. So we're going to have to very carefully try and sneak up upon him. And what he's going to do is lapse all around this place. So we need to be able to get the jump on him basically. Which is easier said than done. Because if you even get within a few metres of him he pegs it and it's really annoying. So what I'm going to try and do here is head into these shops. And then very carefully walk. Ah, oh, he escaped. We got pretty close. Pretty close. Rabanastra thought we tried. Uh, Rabanastrun thought we wanted to talk to them, but we didn't. So let's go back around to the shops on the other side. And very carefully overtake by running through the pillars here. And wait for him to come out to the side. And carefully walk. There, we did it. Okay, maybe it wasn't as bad as I expected. But uh, I remember last time I played this game on the PS2, I was probably doing that for about 20 minutes, trying to get to uh, speak to this cockatrice, whose name is Ren. And... What happened then? Oh, that was me chatting. I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> I don't believe we've got to do it again. You have to choose uh, no is the option. There you go, I made that mistake, so you don't have to. But let's see if I can get it twice in a row now. So wait for him to 
stroll past. Oh, no, he saw us. So can we get past him at this point? Possibly not. So we'll run, walk over here rather. And then, oh, flipping neck. Yeah, I spoke too soon. Flipping neck. It took me about 10 minutes that time to do it. This time I am going to select the right option, which is um, no. And then he asks us to forgive him for running away from these pains. Oh my goodness, that is a pain. Well, have fun with that one. He tells us his sob story. Quite frankly, I'm not interested after the runaround he's just made us go through. But there we have it. Oh. Just check that he has actually gone because sometimes he doesn't, but he has. So what I'm going to do now is to take a brief... Okay, first you do have to return to the north. Uh, I thought that sometimes this happens automatically, but I guess I was wrong. Uh, you want to return here and then speak to Ren and tell her that Chit has returned. After that then, uh, Ren is going to go over to the Giza Plains. And you get the Deathbringer, and that's the end of this particular part of the side quest. Ren is done. Whew. Right then, so next up, we're off to Jihara. So back to the teleport crystal we go, and I'll meet you there. Right, so here we are in Jihara, and we're going to exit the area with the teleport crystal. And we'll head over to the central section of this area. And we can see the cockatrice is just situated here, causing a bit of a commotion. Everyone's come to see what's going on. So we'll go ahead and speak to this cockatrice and find out that this cockatrice is named Shuri. I ain't going to uh, speak the dialogue here because it's <laughs> there's a lot of it. But basically, Shuri had a fly away, didn't realise how far Shuri had flown and Shuri ended up here. So once we've spoke to Shuri, we're going to speak to the Gary Herder next to them. You can speak the tongue of the cockatrice, then ask this one why it has come here. So we're going to speak to Shuri once more. And then we'll speak to the Gary Herder once more. Tell him that he came some, that it came from the Giza Plains. And now we need to go and speak to the Great Chief. So the Great Chief is located in the westernmost part of Jihara. And just through here we're looking for Ubal Car. Sitting down chilling of course. That's what Great Chiefs generally do I'm sure. So he wants to do us a favour, would we deliver this to the cockatrice? We get the gift of the great chief. So we're going to head back now. It's an interesting side quest this, isn't it? I mean the whole thing in general, not just this particular part of it. So we'll speak to Shuri once more, give him his presence. And now Shuri, I think, is um, happy to go back, shall we say. So we'll speak to Gary Herder once more. And we get the scene. And off goes the cockatrice. And we get our next reward, which is a Platinum Dagger. So there's actually quite some nice rewards for this side quest, which is why I do recommend doing it as soon as it becomes available in its entirety. Right, next up, we're going to be heading over to the Damasca Estersand. And we've got another cockatrice to help out. So teleport to the Damasca Estersand, which will bring you right into the South Bank village, and right next to our next little friendly bird. 
So we'll speak to the next one and we learn that this is Sasson, who tells us they want to see Tori. But I ain't got nowhere near the bleeding Nathil. I ain't thick. So Nathil is a fiend, a wolf to be precise. And so that's all we can do by speaking to Sasson. We're going to need to find a way of helping her out now. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go up here and speak to Chijigri, or whoever this person's name is. And we're going to select. Um, Cross the river. Yeah, that's it. And this triggers the next section. Have you seen the cockatrice in the village? It's named Sasa. And then Chigri advises us that we should help Sasa to cross the river. So here we have to choose who we want to put on the ferry. And remember, we've got the wolf as well to deal with, which is Nathal. So if you've <laughs> ever thought, if you've ever heard of the whole puzzle of how you get the uh, chicken, the fox, and the hay across the other side uh, of the river so that one doesn't eat the others while you're away. Well, this is basically that puzzle in Final Fantasy XII game form. So what we're going to do here is select Nathal. And we're just gonna be going backwards and forwards now a few times. So that's the wolf across, and we're just going to head straight back again. And this time, we're going to select no one. And again, we're going back. This time, we're going to select Ariel. And this time, we're going to go back. Since Sasson on this side won't go near Nathal, but we're still going to select no one for the time being. Okay? And so now we've got Sasson by herself over here. We're going to go ahead and select Sasson this time. It's basically an easier version of the riddle that I was talking about because you don't actually have to return anything. And now we're just going to follow this cockatrice and say hello. Well, if it isn't Sasson, run away from Giza Plains again, have you? Terra must be worried sick. What's Terra got to do with this? This is between you and me, Tori. You're always trying to avoid it, but enough's enough. It's time to listen to your art. Well, I'm glad you came all this way to see me, but think of your poor friends back in Giza. It's not fair to them. Think how Terra must feel. You know, you're the only cockatrice for me, Sasson. Now be a good boy and head back home to Giza, all right? I'm your favorite, honest. Sure you ain't pulling me leg? You don't fancy Ren or Mooma? You know you're my favorite, Sasson. Yeah, hear that? I'm only a blinking favorite, me? Ho ho ho, I better hurry back to Giza and announce our plans for the wedding. Hmm, this is wrong in so many ways. All right, Sasson, off to Giza with you now. Give my best to Terra and Dania. I'll be waiting. Can't hardly wait to see the look on everyone's face when I give them the good news, though. <laughs> Thanks for your help, son. I'd never have gotten close enough to propose without you. Here's a little something for your trouble. Did you help Sasson reach the North Bank? That couldn't have been easy. He can be a bit of a chicken at times. Take this for your trouble. 
And we get a Koga Blade for that very interesting Cockatrice Rescue. Yes, very interesting. Right then, so next up, we're going to be heading uh, back, in fact, to the Crystal. And we're going to make our way over to uh, Arcades. Right, so I've teleported over to Arcades. You get plonked into Sunoble, which is the area. Uh, you're going to need the Sandalwood Shop in order to access the next area, which is a secret part of the city. You can only access it with that item. If you don't have that item, then go and check out my walkthrough. I believe it's episode 48 called How to Get the Sandal Chop. Then, uh, the Sandalwood Chop even. Then uh, that will, uh, what you've got, that give you access to this next area. You can say hello to Docent here. I'll see you for Sandalwood Chop. How would you care to go to Central? Oh, sorry, would you care to go to Central now, sir? Yes, please. And then we can plonk along here. And this will take us to the area known as the Grand Arcade. And look at this. We can see. Our cockatrice friend is here and running away from us. Let's see if we can walk up slowly. Doesn't seem we've got any chance of uh, speaking with them, does it? So what we need to do now is go and find another cockatrice, since we can't speak to this one. So we're going to basically go back out of this place. <laughs> How this cockatrice got here without a sandal wood uh, thingy-majig, I'd love to know, but... Hey, there you go. So at this point we're going to make our way back to old arcades. Which means using the taxi. So once you're back in the uh, old arcades, head over to the east, into this section where I am now, which is the Alley of the Low Whispers. And then just make yourself um, comfortable as you traverse up to the northeast section of this beautiful place. So we're going to go down here. Here, grab that. Lots of rust. Which you can get quite frequently here, by the way, even if you don't have the diamond armor equipped. Down here. And there's another cockatrice just chilling, not knowing what to do with themselves. What a nice story. Now we need to head back. Right, so back in the Grand Arcade, we actually need to catch this Chocobo now. And it's not as hard as catching the last one, in all honesty. So this is Agatha. And Agatha wants a boy cockatrice. So fortunately for her, we managed to find one already in old Arcades, of course. <laughs> right then. And that's it for this one. And we get another reward. This time a Tumulus. And we're sorted now. So what we need to do in order to sort the next Cockatrice is to head back over to Balfenheim Port. So that's the last area we've been to as part of the main story walkthrough. I'll see you there. Right, so here we are at Balfenheim Port in Seabreeze Lane. By the way, you can get a chest there one time spawn. I think I might have looted it at some point off the camera or off the recording. And it contains a nice amount of gear. So if you see it, make sure you grab it. And who have we got here? 
Uh, no nobody of uh, tremendous excitement, it's got to be said. Milfed, Moogle and Cartographer's Guild. So we need to head into this section here actually. And oh, just grab the extra chest. For Gil, that was worth it. So what we want to do is speak to the Chocobo Wrangler over here. A very strange Chocobo has got mixed in with my flock. I don't remember raising that bird. Yeah, that is a strange Chocobo, isn't it? It's almost like cockatrice flavour. But it seems happy enough here. I've tried to put it out, but it keeps coming back. My, that's an awfully pretty feather you have. So no surprise, we need to show her the feather of the flock. What a strange feather, hmm? Did you hear something? Eh? Who said that? You heard me, I'm a chocobo, innit? Just because a bloke's on a short side, it don't make him no blooming cockatrice. People these days, eh? No respects, and they're even worse back in Giza. Can't do nothing. Go for a stroll, and they stick you back in a pen. I've put up with it for years, but when I saw me chance, I was off. And I ain't never going back. Not that they'll find me out here, of course. Did you just hear that? How odd, I wonder what it was. Right, so, once we've uh, finished with that one, we need to go and speak to the Miffed Chocobo, that, sorry, the Miffed Moogle that pops over. Koopo? Now there's an odd-looking Chocobo. Say, is it cheaper to hire one of those, Koopo? <laughs> right then, okay. Next up, we're going to head over to... Gerdy over here. Um, this will kick it off a scene. Hey, Gerdy, how much to hire that funny-looking Chocobo? Uh, actually, I've never seen that Chocobo before in my life, Koopo. But, yeah, I'll take Gil for it. Koopo... Po, that's cheap. Well, I'm off, Koopo. On the road again at last. Blimey, what's your game then, eh? I ain't going nowhere, mate. I'm happy here, thanks for asking. And here, this is for you, Koopo. If you hadn't noticed this chuckle when you did, I never would have gotten out of here. And our reward for this, and the final one, is a defender. Not quite our final reward, but the final chocotrice. Cockatrice. Yeah, they should be called chocotrices, shouldn't they? Since they're easily confused with chocobos, apparently. Alright, alright, have it your way. Whatever makes you happy. Wouldn't want you unhappy, would I? Blinking cheek. Cool, it ain't half hard being a chocobo. <laughs> Squawk. And they're off. Right then. So now, we can basically head back to the Giza Plains. Since, so long as we've got all of them, and I believe we have, we'll get one final reward, which isn't that exciting, unfortunately. Not like the ones we've been getting up until this point, anyhow. So I'm just going to port back to Rabanasta here. And I'm hoping it's still going to be dry after all that. Let's just speak to uh, Weatherboy over here. It's only just become the rain, so that means I can't actually do the rest at the moment, so I'll have to come back to it. Right, yeah, so we should be able to make our way back now to the Giza Plains. It's dry. I just did a couple of hunts in the meantime whilst waiting. And we're going to head back to the Nomad Village. And hopefully all our cockatrice friends will be back in their pen where they belong, and it looks like they are. So we can go ahead and speak to Terra. Who says thank you and finally gives us two high ethers as our overall reward. And that brings us to the end of the side quest. There's nothing else left we can do apart from speak to some of the cockatrices. Uh, there's nothing that we'll get from doing so apart from a bit of story from them if we want to read it. <laughs> it's been a bit of a weird side quest, hasn't it? Anyhow, folks, I think we'll finish this episode off here. So thanks for joining me. I hope this has helped you out and that you'll be able to complete this side quest now as well. So if it's helped you, don't forget to let me know in the comments section. I really do appreciate your support, by the way. 
And, you know, maybe if you want to, you can hit the like button and come back soon for more Zodiac Age walkthrough content. Cheers all. I've been your host, Fuzz, once again. And I look forward to the next episode.